Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today we're going to go traveling to <laughs> Scandinavia. There are a number of countries in Scandinavia. Can you name them, Stephanie? No. You can't. No. Oh, come on. You certainly must know Sweden and Denmark, Finland, and Norway, and of course Finland. Yes, you said the magic word Finland,、yeah. and that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's a wonderland there. It might actually still be a winter wonderland because、mm. it's March now. There still might be some snow. Oh, a lot、there. still. Yeah, yeah. So yes, you can still experience winter there in Finland, and that's where we're going today. And of course, we're going to find out all of the wonderful things that、uh, Finland has offered the world in today's program. So let's read through the entire contents of our lesson right now. <laughs> Snow falls and builds up outside the door, but you're inside, feeling cozy and warm. You look up through the transparent domed ceiling of your igloo and gaze at the stars in the sky. Suddenly, green and purple lights dance across the sky. It's the aurora borealis, and it's one of the sights that drew you to Finland. Finland is one of Europe's Nordic countries. And sits in the northeast of the continent, bordering Russia. The country is known as the land of a thousand lakes, but it actually boasts about 188,000 lakes. Its biggest lake, Saima, is the fourth largest in Europe. In addition, Finland is home to about 179,000 islands. The country's population was about 5.5 million people as of 2013. With most of them living in the south of Finland, especially in the capital Helsinki, the country lies in the temperate zone between the 60th and 70th northern parallels. This means Finland is covered in trees and enjoys warm summers and snowy winters. Visitors to Finland usually travel to Lapland in the far north of the country to take in the area's incredible natural sights. In summer, they marvel at the midnight sun. A phenomenon caused by Finland's relatively high position on the globe. In fact, one quarter of Finland is within the Arctic Circle. At the northernmost part of Finland, the sun stays up for 73 days straight in summer. For something more active while in Lapland, visitors can go on a reindeer or husky ride. This could involve riding in a sleigh. Or putting on skis and being pulled by a reindeer in a race. Last but not least, the southern city Helsinki, with its old European charm, is the perfect place to see Finland's fascinating city life. Oh, so we get to investigate or explore Finland from afar for、we、the、do. next couple of programs. I've never been there, so this is kind of fun for me. It looks kind of cold there most of the year, actually. Even in summer, it doesn't get that hot. We're calling Finland a wonderland, a place where there are lots of wonderful things. You could call a lot of different places around this world a wonderland. Could be a city that has a lot of beautiful historical sites and museums and theaters, or you could go to a place that's basically just outdoors. For example, we both have been to Yellowstone National Park、yeah. in America, and it's a wonderland. It's kind of cool too. Certainly, when I think of the word wonderland, of course, I think of Alice in Wonderland.、Mm. So maybe it's a magical kind of fairy tale country, and you might be fantasizing about being a knight in shining armor or something like that. If you go to Finland.、Mm. Well, here's a way we could describe Finland: snow falls and builds up outside the door, but you're inside, feeling cozy and warm.、Uh, this is a situation that、uh, occurs in the northern parts of the world, and maybe the very southern parts of the world, like、mm -hmm. in, maybe in、uh, down there in Chile or Argentina when there's snow falling. And of course, the more the snow falls, the more it builds up. Outside your door, if something builds up, it gets larger and larger, or you have more and more of that thing. The、or、noise, more and more layers of something,、mm -hmm, right? Indeed, I could say the noise at the concert was building up so much that I had to put in earplugs. Yeah, we know that there was、uh, a landslide a couple months ago in China, where there was a lot of dirt. 
and things left over from construction that had been building up and building up to this big mountain, and suddenly they had a lot of rain, and then the landslide fell. Or maybe it's even an emotion. Maybe you're really frustrated, and that frustration keeps building up and building up. Yeah, I was also thinking about、uh, sometimes when cities change.、Uh-huh. Uh, you could say an area is built up now.、Uh, I used to go out to Nehu all the time thirty、yeah. years ago,、True. and now it's all built up. There are no longer rice paddies out there.、No. There are nothing but、uh, commercial buildings and apartment buildings and stuff like that. It's all built up there. But here, yes, the snow builds up. You could also say it accumulates、mm-hmm. outside the door, but. You don't need to worry about that because you're inside feeling cozy and warm. Cozy just means very comfortable. And、uh, we're also going to be talking about what it's like being inside this cozy place, this warm place where you feel great. Cozy just means kind of feeling like you're at home. You have a nice feeling of、uh, comfort, warmth. You're relaxed. I love cozy places. Well, you look up. And through the transparent domed ceiling of your igloo, you can gaze at the stars in the sky. Now we're talking about being inside an igloo, which is a home made out of cubes of ice, which is something most of us have not lived in before. But you find them in very, very cold places, especially where they have Eskimos. Here we're talking about a place that's transparent. If something's transparent, guys, you can see through it. Sometimes, ladies, we buy skirts that are a little too transparent, and we need to wear a slip underneath them so that、uh, people can't see our underwear. But here, it's a transparent domed ceiling. If something's domed, it's shaped like half of a basketball. If you took a basketball and cut it in half, that's the shape of a dome. Indeed, transparent means light can pass through, and then you can see what's on the other side clearly. So yes, you look through the transparent domed ceiling of your igloo, which is a house made out of ice, basically, and you gaze at the stars in the sky. Uh, that sounds like a wonderful thing to do if you're an astronomer or a star gazer.、Mm. And suddenly, green and purple lights dance across the sky. What the heck? What is happening there? <laughs> This happens out of the blue, as we say. It happens suddenly. You get these green and purple lights. Well, what is that? You probably know, but it's the aurora borealis, and it's one of the sights that drew you to Finland. Yes, we could say that is an attraction to Finland. I guess people travel there to see the northern lights, as、yeah. they're also called.、Uh, the scientific term is aurora borealis. Aurora just means those lights, basically,、uh, at the North Pole and the South Pole.、Uh, borealis, I think, is like the old name of some northern god or something in Greek mythology. So aurora borealis is the northern lights, and、mm. aurora australis, and that refers to the southern lights. You can probably see them, as I said, down in Chile, or Argentina, or maybe even from South Africa. I've always wanted to see the northern lights, as we refer to them typically. Aurora borealis is more of the scientific, technical term, but、uh, I haven't been up north far enough to see them. I, I want to see them someday. Well, Finland in the second paragraph says it's one of Europe's Nordic countries. When we started out, Tom was talking about Scandinavia. If you talk about Nordic countries, Nordic is an adjective. It just means related to Scandinavia, Finland, Iceland, all of those really cold places, and to the Faroe Islands, which I don't really know much about them. But you're talking about a cold northern part of the world. It sits in the northeast of the continent. Bordering Russia, so Russia is its neighbor. You could say, continent is one of the world's main continuous、uh, pieces of land. We have Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, and South America. And of course, it、uh, borders Russia. To border just means it's next to something, next、mm-hmm. to another country or another province or state. Like、uh, the United States borders Mexico, or Canada borders the United States, etc. That means, I guess, to the east there, we've got Russia.、Mm-hmm. Well, this is Finland, and the country is known as the land of a thousand lakes. 
That's a lot of lakes, but、yeah. it actually boasts about one hundred eighty-eight thousand lakes. That's a lot more. The number says there, but、yeah. maybe the word "thousand" there just kind of means thousands of lakes or something like that. In other words, if you like lakes, then you should go to Finland. Yeah, what's its biggest lake called there, Tom? Saima. Sounds good, Saima. Maybe if Saima-a. there's two A's there, maybe it's a separate、yeah. syllable there. Do you know Finnish is one of the world's hardest languages to learn? I would、uh, know. I've never tried to study. Oh, it, they've been ranked actually. It's up there in the top five. So、okay. it is difficult, but、uh, we're just going to say it like we would it. In English, Saima or Saima Ma. Saima A.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It's very, very big. It's the fourth largest in all of Europe, so it is a very big lake. In addition, Finland is home to about one hundred seventy-nine thousand islands. Now, I wasn't aware of that. That's a lot of islands. So it's not just that main country of Finland. They have lots of little islands that they can lay claim to. If you lay claim to something, you can say it's mine. Right now, of course, Finland uh, is uh, next to the Baltic Sea there, so、mm-hmm. there are probably lots of islands in the sea there. But since there are lots of lakes there as well, there are probably lots of、uh, islands in those lakes as well. Hence, lots of islands there. Again, if you like islands, Finland is the place to be. And、uh, we're going to continue talking some more about Finland in just、mm-hmm. a couple of seconds. But let's take a time out right now and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. Today we're going to look at the fifth unit. We're going to introduce a country that is located in the Atlantic Ocean. If you want to talk about the Atlantic Ocean, you will use Nordic countries. N O R D I C. Nordic, of course, refers to the five countries comprised of Norway. These include Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden. These five countries, we're going to talk about today, are Finland. Finland. 它在欧洲的东北，那这边的地理位置呢？它介绍的非常的详细。但是我们还要注意的重点是，当你说一个国家也好，一个建筑物也好，它的地理位置位于哪里，要注意到动词的使用。我们呢会把它当做一个主动语态的动词，是 sit， 或者是 stand。或者是 lie， 像在这里就是站呐、啊、坐啊、躺，好，建筑物可以这样子，地方可以这样子。所以，像这边介绍芬兰的时候，说，哎，它是位在欧陆的东北，它就用 sit。我们再来往下看，下面呢介绍这个国家，还会说它有一个别名。我们通常称芬兰为“千湖之国”。这个有一个片语哦。这边他说到 ：“The country is known as the land of a thousand lakes.” Is known as 我们知道，当你要表示说以什么而为人所知，是用什么样的角色、用什么样的身份、用什么样的名称，你的介系词会用 as。那相对的，我们常常会搞不清楚的，就是那如果是以什么特色闻名呢？你用的接系词就会变成 for。那这边它是以这个称号闻名，所以说这里用的接系词就是 as。继续，我们再来往下看，下面他又说到了，那芬兰这个国家，它其实有几点非常的特别，其中有一点就是 Finland is home to about one。Hundred seventy nine thousand islands. 当然，这个地方 is home to. 我们常常用这个片语来表示是什么的大本营。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, now we're talking about Finland in today's program. I should mention here, Finland is what we call it, but、uh, people from that country refer to their own country as Suomi, S-U-O-M-I. So, if you see someone from Finland、uh, going through customs and they take out their passport, it's going to say Suomi on there. Or if you see them playing in international、uh, sporting events like you know hockey or something, they're very good at that. It will say Suomi on their sweaters. But in any case. 
here. We talked about the many lakes that they have there, and also the many islands they have in Finland. And it goes on to say that the country's population was about 5.5 million people as of 2013. So that's、uh, I don't know. Is that about the size of the Taipei metropolitan area? No, that's eight million. Yeah, okay, so it's less than Taipei actually. Yeah. And most of these people live in the south of Finland,、mm -hmm. especially in the capital Helsinki. Of course, the capital of a country is where. Usually, it's government is、mm -hmm. well. Yeah, it's where its government is, but oftentimes it's also where their main industry is, and、uh, entertainment, and art, and stuff like that. Wow, that's not very many people, really, if you compare it to even Taiwan, where we have lots of people in a small area.、Uh, I met some people traveling when I was younger. They were Finnish kids, and、uh, they were in college, and they had excellent English. In fact, I thought they were Americans.、Ooh. They really didn't have any accent,、uh, which was kind of stunning to me. They're very blonde. They're light-colored people over there, but they were nice people. Anyway, there aren't many. Of them there in the country of Finland, the country also it says here lies in the temperate zone between the 60th, 70th northern parallels. I don't talk about the temperate zone much. Do you, Tom? I know you like geography a lot. Well, I think they're just mentioning it here just to tell us、uh, what the weather is like there.、Mm. Uh, it's uh, just basically a place that has mild temperatures, not too hot in the summer and not too cold in the winter, I guess. So this is the temperate zone. It might be because it's next to the Baltic Sea there,、maybe. so they get maybe part of the Gulf Stream there, so it's not so brutally cold like、mm. Siberia is.、Ooh. So in any case, here it lies in the Temperate zone between the 60th and 70th northern parallels.、Uh, those are lines on the Earth that、uh, help us figure out where we are.、Um, the parallels here, the 60th and the 70th. I think the 48th parallel is the border between the United States and Canada, for example. Now, Tom, I'm just going to guess this, but I don't think the people of Taiwan would consider the temperatures in Finland very temperate or mild. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's probably going to take a little getting used to、yeah. if you go there, especially at this time of year. But you know, the saunas and stuff are nice and toasty. Oh, good. But in any case, here、uh, this means Finland is covered in trees and enjoys warm summers and snowy winters. Beautiful. So basically, that's what it means if you live in the temperate zone. So there's going to be lots of forest there. Warm summers, not too hot. You know, it's not so brutally hot like、uh, like Gaoshong or someplace like、yeah. that. And snowy winters, so you can expect to do some skiing、mm -hmm. while you're there. Now let's move on now to the next paragraph. It says visitors、okay. to Finland usually travel to Lapland、uh -huh. in the far north of the country to take in the areas, the incredible natural sights. I guess、uh, that makes sense. If you're going to Finland, you might as well go really far north just to say. That you've been really far north, that you were up over or beyond the Arctic Circle. If you take something in, you enjoy it. You're on vacation, and you go and see some tourist sites. You take in the attractions. You can take in a movie by going to a movie. You can take that in. So you just enjoy yourself. Taking in the natural sights. These are not man-made. It's not like going to Disneyland that people have built. These are beautiful scenic views that you'll be taking in. They're incredible because they're almost impossible to believe. They're so beautiful. So you have a lot to look forward to if you get up that way in your travels. Now in the summer, they marvel at the midnight sun. Remember the the sun doesn't set like it does here. So even at midnight, there's a strong sun still in the sky. If you marvel at something. You're kind of going, wow! Can you believe it's this bright at midnight? So you're、uh, filled with wonder. It's kind of astonishing that it can be so bright that late at night. Indeed, and this is a phenomenon caused by Finland's relatively high position. On the globe, if you talk about a phenomenon, we're just talking about something that happens、mm -hmm. usually in nature, like a typhoon is a natural phenomenon, for example. A tornado is a natural phenomenon. Well, this is a phenomenon that happens because Finland is so far north. It's relatively high position on the globe. Relatively here just means you're comparing one thing with something else. I could say that、uh, it's relatively hot today. 
today compared with yesterday. Yesterday was hot, yeah, but today is even hotter. So it's relatively hot today compared with yesterday, for example. And yes, it has this high position on the globe.、Uh, as you know, of course, the Earth is tilted on its axis. So during the summer months,、mm -hmm. uh, places in the north experience sunlight for many months or many weeks at a time, whereas down at the South Pole, it's dark all the time during the summer. Yeah, it's、uh, the opposite, you could say. So, we can say here, in fact, one quarter, twenty-five percent of Finland is within the Arctic Circle. It's where the North Pole is. So they're really far up north. If you want to just kind of imagine a globe in your mind, at the northernmost part of Finland, that's the tip part of Finland up there in the north. The sun stays up for seventy-three days straight. In summer, I think it would be hard to go to sleep at night. You might have to get a mask that you could put over your eyes to shield your eyes from the light, because it's hard to go to sleep when it's bright. Well, maybe、uh, evolution has made people up there able to just stay up、uh, for seventy-three days. <laughs>、no. Who knows? It probably doesn't <laughs> happen that way. But in any case, it does stay up for a long time during the summer. And for something more active, while in Lapland,、mm. visitors can go on a reindeer or husky ride. Of course, you know reindeer are the deer that pull Santa's sleigh.、Yes. A husky is a dog that's famous from being from the north. It's those kind of black and white dogs. Sometimes they're red and white too. Uh, they pull sleighs up there. A lot of people in Taiwan have them as pets, although I think they're supposed to live in northern places. But in any case, you could go th for a husky ride. I think it's probably a, a husky sleigh, or what they call a, a dog sled, sled, a dog sled pulled by、yeah. those dogs. So that would be something you、yeah. could write home about. That would be fun. They're pretty strong dogs. You'd probably have a couple of huskies pulling you. Well, they have a lot of fur up there, as you know, because it gets really cold. That's why I worry about them when I see them in Taiwan. I I worry that those huskies are too hot in this temperature. Well, this could involve riding in a sleigh like Santa's sleigh, or putting on skis and being pulled by a reindeer in a race. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, I've never seen that before. If you've gone. Snow skiing, you know what skis are? They're those long pieces of plastic. It's a type of plastic nowadays. They used to be made out of wood or fiberglass. Fiberglass, and being pulled by those, and you'd kind of go fast if a reindeer's pulling you. They're not slow animals. No, they are not. Okay, so yes, you could go on a reindeer ride or a sleigh ride. Sleigh is like a large sled that people can sit in, whereas a sled is like just for one person, and you go down a hill or something、mm. like that. It's a lot、yeah. of fun. And I think they say sledge in England. We say sleigh or sled in America. And you could also put on those skis and be pulled by a reindeer in a race. So I guess you could also maybe do some cross-country skiing or maybe some downhill skiing.、Mm. Who knows?、Mm -hmm. And last but not least, the southern city Helsinki, with its old European charm, is the perfect place to see Finland's fascinating city life. If you're into that sort of thing,、uh, yes, that's one reason you could go to Finland is to hang out in Helsinki. There, it's an old city. There, it's got European charm. Cool. Charm, of course, is a special kind of feeling or a special kind of quality or atmosphere. Atmosphere that delights you, and you think, "Oh, this is this is so cool! It's got all these old buildings with different kinds of colors, and I could take pictures and post them on my Facebook page and all that kind of stuff." It's so charming here. A person could be charming as well.、Mm -hmm. Charm here is just the noun version of the word. You can also use it as a verb. You can charm people, and of course, Tom just told us the adjective. Oh, someone's charming. A city's charming. That's a nice compliment to be paid if someone says you're charming. That's for sure. Sure. So it's the perfect place to see Finland's fascinating city life. Some people who go traveling would prefer to stay in the city and see, you know, what's going on with the people who live there, rather than go out and just see nature. I kind of want to do a little bit of both myself when I travel. Me too. Yeah, this sounds like the perfect place to do that. Finland. We're going to listen now to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to wrap up. We'll continue to look at. 
那提到芬兰，提到它的位置在北欧，而且是在欧陆的东北。那我们再来看看它还有什么特别的地方呢？这个国家的人民呢，人数总共。非常的少，只有五百五十万的人口，而且大部分都住在芬兰的南部。那我们看到这里有一个时间的介系词片语，他说这个人数的统计是到西元二零一三年为止。As of， 我们知道 as of 这个片语基本上后面接的。往往就是一个时间的点，但是它的解释呢，其实可以是指这个时间是它的起点，也可以说它是它的终点。这点非常的特别。像以这个地方来说，说到这个人数的统计，它事实上是指到2013年为止。所以，如果你看到这个片语，可能要看前后文才能决定它的意思。比如说 ，as of July first， 那可能是讲。哎，从七月一号开始，也可以是讲到七月一号为止。OK， 我们继续往下看，下面呢这个句子也是一样的重要，提到它的国家总人口，然后这边在二零一三这个数字后面有个逗点，它接着写 with most of them living in the south of Finland with。这个介系词很重要，因为在句型上呢，我们常常会看到 with， 然后呢后面接一个片语，而这个句构上是 with 后面加受词，受词后面可能会有一个补充说明的受词补语，而且比较特别的是，这个受词补语啊，你往往会看到的，哎，是 v i n g 或者是 p p， 也就是现在分词或是过去分词。那作为补语用的，用分词其实是很自然的。那主要呢要判断的，也就是说，它跟受词的关系是主动还是被动。所以，当你提到这边的人大部分住在哪里，这个住当然是主动的。所以，你用的补语分词是 v i n g living。下面还有一个重点，提到这个国家，我们说它是在北边哦，就是北欧国家嘛。可是它的。区域在地理位置上，它是属于温带区。那提到温带区，它讲到一个纬度的问题。说到纬度，所谓的温带区哦，它的纬度呢，芬兰它是在六十到七十这个北纬之间。那这个说法在英文上要怎么说？它其实会用到的是一个叙述的概念。换句话说，你看到了 sixties， 看到了 seventies， 这是属于叙述的用法啊、哦。但是后面用到了一个单位 parallel，parallel parallel 其实我们知道，如果在数学上说它是平行线，那就纬度来看，它的确也是一圈一圈的平行线。那在英文里头，当你要谈到纬度、纬线，你可以用 parallel。当然 ，parallel 其实在这里就等同于 a parallel of latitude， 因为我们知道经度叫做 longitude。纬度叫 latitude， 而你现在在算纬度的时候，用 parallel 这个字，其实指的就是 a parallel of latitude。我们再来往下看，下面呢提到了芬兰，它这个地方的自然景观非常的漂亮，所以你会到哪里玩呢？它介绍这里叫 Lapland， 提到说在这里可以进行从事什么样的活动。那这边最重要的一个，也是大家都知道的，就是在芬兰有所谓的。Midnight sun， 也就是午夜的太阳。提到午夜的太阳，他说它是一个 phenomenon caused by Finland's relatively high position of the globe。注意到了这里的 caused， 它是一个过去分词，它是用来修饰这个 phenomena 这个现象，它是被什么所造成的，所以它其实是一个分词片语。OK， 我们今天的介绍就到这边结束，我们下次见。That's it for today. But Finland is a fascinating, wonderful country, and we're going to continue talking about it in our next program. So please stay tuned. Please tune in then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.